uh, research that was done at Penn State with a professor of kinesiology at Penn State called Ginger Gottschall, who's subsequently become a program consultor, consultant on some of the programs we teach. But the focus um, for what we're going to talk about this evening is core training for two reasons. One is injury preven prevention, for particularly for running, but for most sports, but also um, maximising performance. So one is the preventing of injury, but also increasing performance. Um, two things that physiotherapists and kinesiologists and trainers have known for quite a while is that core training is very effective at decreasing injury. And so I'm going to run through the top 10 running exercises that are usually um, given to prevent injuries. So that's the first component. But the second is once we know that core training is going to increase performance and decrease injury, what's the most effective way to do it? So the groundbreaking study, and it was actually groundbreaking at Penn State, um, which led to the formation of this program was the relationship between isolated core exercises and what we refer to as integrated core exercises. So if you do fitness, um, maybe, never you could demonstrate, well, the, an, an isolated, so your, say the rectus abdomini, which are the, the muscles that give you a six pack and that are at the surface, usually you do a standard crunch exercise and isolated because it works on these specific muscles. But, an, but other exercises which are called integrated, so the main one would be a hover, because obviously I'm, I'm having to use those muscles, but I also have to use my shoulders, mm -hmm. and I also have to use my glutes. Mm -hmm. And obviously I wouldn't be swinging around like this, I'd be keeping myself still, and if I integrated other movements into it, I'd be working more and more of the muscles. So common wisdom, as well as the feeling of when you do it, is that I'd be working most intensively on these muscles when I'm isolating them, yes, but only working on them a little bit if I were in a hover. That's what one would think. Isolation is intense, integrated, yes, you're using everything, but not so intense. What uh, Ginger Gottschall did at Penn State was she was the first person to really see how this worked and pinned electrodes on subjects. So their glutes, their deltoids, the obliques, muscles here and the muscles here. Then got them to do isolating exercises, crunches, as well as the integrated hovers, but also things that involve balance, which we'll be talk, demonstrating. And the study found that actually, contrary to common sense or popular wisdom, you use these muscles more in integrated uh, exercises so that the notion of doing a hundred or a hundred thousand crunches to get to this muscle here or doing a lot of this was actually not the most effective way to work your core. So that's the, that was the first finding. So the first finding is the value of integrated core exercises. So I'm going to run through what the best exercises would be and how you would incorporate that for injury pre prevention and maximising performance. To give you an idea of how it can maximise performance um, in runners, there was a there's often a noted improvement of performance by about eight percent. So if you're running a marathon, that can be about 15 minutes in a 10k, three or four minutes depending on your 10k time, 5k two or three minutes depending on your time. That's a big difference. So maximising performance and preventing injury. I don't know. Uh, how much experience you've had with like going to physiotherapists, but the two things they'll say is strengthen your glutes uh, and improve your core. So I'm going to run through uh, the, the basic, the, the, the exercises that would prevent that and what we mean by an integrated core exercise. So the first, um, so I'm going to run through, the first integrated, as I've already demonstrated, is the hover, which is Either you can do it on your knees or on your toes. And the idea you can see that in order to keep my back flat, I have to draw my abdominals in. I'm also working my shoulders and I'm also working my glutes. And if I start to make it more difficult, 
they'll increase the intensity. And the sky's the limit with that. So the program can start with you just even being here, but working all, working your core. By core, we don't mean just this. Glutes, eyes, hamstrings, rear deltoid, everything that gives you good posture good, and stability. So that if you've done running, you'll know that if you've got a if you if you've got a weak core, you fall very heavily on your feet. Your performance isn't very efficient. Your stability isn't efficient. The more you, the less stability you have, the less efficiency in performance. More injury prone, less efficient. So that's the first integrated core exercise. The second would be a side plank, either here or here. And then again, you can integrate other movements. And again, the sky's the limit, both in terms of starting. You can be here or here. So really it can be as, and then increasing the complexity. Second exercise. The third is what we refer to as a supine drive. So again, just by doing this, just this movement alone, having your lower back stabilised here and here is already forcing you to keep your core stable and then extending and retracting. And we, we, do, we can do that, you can add resistance, you can use tubes and so on for that. Um, the other, um, again, well actually while well, I might as well do this, the other would be the bridge, again you're, you're maximising your glutes here and then you can incorporate both balance and then extend from there. Um, the next is what we call the crabble. This is where the tube comes in. So you might want to try this, seeing as you're here. Yeah. Yeah. This is just because this, now we're moving into some of the, the top exercises for injury prevention. So if you step into the tube, you can basically get a, a full strength workout with this bit of equipment. Okay, so that we can. So the first one is what we call the crab walk. So you pick the tube up here, and you use as you lift the tube up above the hips, you use it to draw your shoulders back, and then you simply walk backwards and forwards. And within about thirty seconds, uh, it should start to feel so back back, forward, forward, back, back, forward, forward. And if it's too easy, you just lift the handles higher, keeping your shot, and you should start to feel it activating deep into the glutes. Not yet. So but it's like back, back. Well, we have solutions, because you've got a grey tube, which is level one, this is level two, and we have black tubes. Yeah, I have a black one at home. Oh, good. Okay, yeah. so then we might as well, while we're, while we're here, we might as well, this, would be the other, both at an angle, and again, keeping... Yeah, I can feel that. Yeah, and you do it with a slight bend in your knee, up here, and keep your posture upright, and then the trick would be rather than to tap back, and then to push back on an angle, hold, and then you start to feel it here. Yes? Yeah. Another exercise, and again, we're now, the next level up is it's even, so we can say integrated exercises, maximize the activation of, the, of, of your core muscles. The other thing that uh, will really increase the eff efficiency of it is to incorporate balance. So this is one of the lunges, one of the exercises that's recommended for injury prevention is a backward stepping lunge, but we, you can intensify that by adding the resistance, yeah that's good, once we're taking clothing off, we know we're getting somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> so, I have a lot of layers on because it's so cold. Yeah. But this is, so you can have, come into a, yeah, so you step, step, and again, you can make it as, so you've stepped quite away into the tube, so you're making it quite, as it were, intense, but that's good because you've got a great tube and you've done this before. So you can lunge and then come into a single-legged squat and draw the tube up. So you draw the tube up and squat and that should vary with a, a tilt forward keeping your 
posture stable and your hips square and then draw the tube up so squat and then draw the shoulder and shoulder blade back so if your elbow goes straight back then you're exercising your rear deltoid your lats yes plus the single legged squat your, your balance so draw up so you row up as you squat into the right leg And you should start to feel that in your glute. As well as drawing the shoulder and shoulder blade back, so you're getting your deltoids, your lats, so you're getting your posture muscles, and uh, your balance, leg strength. Yes, you could go up, up the layer. And so um, some of the, the other, so the eccentric heel raise, Squats, again activating the glute, and then if you draw, draw back, you can get your rear deltoid. Yes, so draw open and back. So just draw the. Sh so if you the knuckles face the floor, push your hips back. Yeah, yeah, cross them over, change hands. That's, that's right. it. Yeah, and draw up like that. Perfect. And so then you're getting glutes, shoulders, back, plus also because you're keeping your posture up upright. An integrated core exercise. Then, I mean, the sky's the limit. Are all these in the handout? There, they are. Okay, good. Yeah, so the, the, exactly. Them. But the 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 two carry home points mm -hmm. are the integrated core exercises. So that it's when we say working your core, you're not just doing the isolated yeah. crunches that are big. So that you you maximise what you're doing integrated training, and then to also work the glutes with so eccentric heel extension and incorporating the balance right. for um, injury prevention and maximise performance.